Awesome. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Um, today, uh, let's see, uh, Mercury Retrograde called and it says hello. <laughs> Welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Donna and I will be your host and your moderator for today's class. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know we're, uh, we're 15 minutes behind, so thank you so much uh, again for your time. For over two decades here, eLotus has been your trusted source for continuing education for acupuncturists, and we offer the largest selection of CU courses with over 3,000 CE hours. And if you're new to eLotus, remember to sign up for an eLotus account today to receive a free one CU course as a welcome gift. And this offer is valid for new accounts only. And attention to California practitioners. If you're in need of live CEUs, we will be holding a live C webinar this weekend with Cole Magbonwa on body mapping acupuncture and herbs. So today's the preview of the class and the full class is this weekend on Saturday and Sunday on July 11 and 12. We will have a small surprise again, as I mentioned earlier, for all those who are attending this webinar today. So stay tuned until the end. Plus, if you're a big fan of learning new acupuncture points that you can implement in your practice, visit the, our ultimate free resource website. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Here we go, is our eLotus core. And normally we have our master dome points on here, but starting yesterday, our TCM points went live. So what does that mean? We have acu the regular TCM points that we learned in school with all the different channels. Uh, they're on our TCM website and you can check them out. The limbs, those are the ones that we have images for. So you can have a visual for it. And it has indications, applications, and relevant to Cole's class is balance method. There's a balance method section. So whichever channel that you're on, it tells you what the the channel to to use. So I believe I believe Cole can correct me if I'm wrong. He uses system four. And so if you're on a spleen channel, it'll tell you what channel to use for system one, two, three, four, five. And I'm talking about the Richard Tan's balance method. So what Cole has done with his class, the, diff the little difference between the body mapping is that he has fine tuned it and it's wonderful. If you see into his class, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. He has a picture of the, he has pictures of where the channels are and they're not straight lines, they're sections and it's just beautifully done. So you guys are really in for a treat for today's class and especially this weekend. All right, so let's get started with today's class on intro to body mapping acupuncture and herbs with emotional for emotional neurological and rheumatic disorders with Cole Mangbangwa. Cole started learning holistic medicine back in 1991. He studied, studied with doctors from a variety of medical transitions, including Chinese, Korean, Ayurvedic, and Himalayan while traveling around the world. He holds a doctorate in acupuncture and Chinese medicine from the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine, and he has worked in a busy public health clinic, private practice, and volunteer clinics using the body mapping acupuncture technique during the last 20 years. So we're so excited that he's here to join us. And finally, let's go ahead and welcome Cole. And Cole, if you can do a quick sound test on your end, I'll go ahead and stop my share so you can start yours. Can you hear me, everybody? <clears throat> Sounds working? Sound is... I need to share? Yes, yes. That's oh, good. Cole, you need to share your PowerPoint. Share screen. And share. On. Let me get that to... <laughs> How's that? <clears throat> I can't see myself, so if I look terrible, uh, don't tell me. <laughs> um, and I can't see questions, answers, anything. Is there a way to do that, Sam? Or do we just run through it? Well, you can go ahead. Okay. Hi, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Cole uh, Thompson Mabonwa, and um, I'm doing this thing I call body mapping acupuncture, which um, is sort of like it sounds. I sort of map uh, the body out in, um, in uh, channels um, instead of lines and dots. I sort of do bands 
Uh, those of you who are new to me, uh, that might sound odd, but uh, we have these beautiful charts. They carry them at eLotus as a small version to fit in your pocket, what have you. Um, there's uh, images on the back, which uh, kind of lay out all the imaging systems. So there's uh, your basic uh, extremities image, torso image, head image. Uh, we go through all this stuff in detail in previous seminars, so we won't spend a ton of time on this, uh, just kind of quick, depending on how, um, how new people are. It would be sort of nice to see um, how many new people we have today. So uh, if you guys could type in new, if you're new to me today, there's also a book uh, and uh, not terribly long, but uh, there's a front and a back image on there. Though, if you want the full uh, chart, it's, I would recommend the chart, not just the book. The book is uh, black and white, but uh, there's a number of, uh, I go specifically into muscles and where exactly muscles relate um, uh, and then how to relate those on the opposite side of the body. So which muscle treats which other muscle. I get very specific on those and some techniques. I have some favorite points and I give you images on how to find those. And then uh, there's a couple of case studies in the back and uh, there's a little bit of an abdominal palpation. We'll talk a lot about that uh, this weekend because internal medicine, we do a lot of uh, abdominal palpation to uh, diagnose. Um, pulse uh, taking as well. I have kind of my own version of that, um, which isn't in the book, but uh, will be talked about a lot this weekend. And also the previous seminar we did was uh, the first couple of days of this sort of internal medicine stuff. So. That's where we're at. I just want to take a quick look and see if um, where we have in the chat here, if I can find it. Everything kind of moved around on me a little bit. Um, there's a Q&A. Okay, newbies, okay. So we'll, um, sorry, this, uh, I'll do a little bit of um, review uh, for some of you who've been here a while and uh, others we will be, um, hopefully won't be too quick, but uh, it's gonna move along. So we have to get to uh, other stuff. So let me get windows out of the way here. This, this uh, format's a bit new for me. Okay, there we are sharing this thing. So first things first, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but basically um, if you're not familiar with body mapping acupuncture, simplified distal point method, meaning points away from where it hurts. Uh, there are basic images involved that are those images. And there's a few channel relationships I like. So if you're familiar with Richard Tan's work, um, here's the few images I like. Uh, we've got opposite clock images, uh, sorry, uh, opposite clock relationships, and we've got name pair relationships. Um, I think it's system two and four, but uh, I, didn't, I don't keep track of his numbering. It seemed to change uh, in the beginning when he was first putting numbers on the systems. And I stuck with the original stuff. And then I sort of started mapping out uh, individual areas with uh, muscles. Uh, specific channel locations, and that's those bands that you see. Uh, I call that band theory versus uh, line theory. And then uh, anatomical correspondence specifically. So I showed you a picture of that. I look for immediate changes. I don't always get them, but I want them. <laughs> and my patients want them, of course. Everybody wants immediate changes. So I look for that. I don't always uh, find it, but uh, the percentages have been going up. So I'd say when I first started, I was getting 50, 60% immediate change. Now I get more like 70, maybe 75%. Um, I feel like I help 90% of the patients using this method, um, though maybe 10% of those I can't help. Uh, 15% don't get the immediate change. Uh, I'm still struggling with why that is. I think maybe um, the patients just aren't, you know, connected mind body wise. So they can't really feel the change happen. A lot of times I will notice a change in the tissue. We'll see a range of motion change, but they don't have a feeling of a difference. So I think that may be part of it. Um, quickly diagnose and treat when you're familiar with uh, this type of a system. Most patients I treat without disrobing things, though I do really like treating shoulder area for hip. So I often will try to get them to wear tank tops or short sleeve and then we just roll the sleeve up and then we can get to those points in the back. Uh, everything else pretty much elbow down, knee down. Uh, with the images, you can reverse them. So um, you can get to everything from the elbow or knee down. Very useful for treating people in chairs. So oftentimes uh, we were working in, uh, when, this, when I was developing this kind of thing, we were working in, um, uh, alcohol and drug treatment, uh, public health, and lots of people sitting in chairs, and we needed easy access. So we needed, we were doing scalp points and ear points, and then we were like, oh, I got back pain. And well, well, I can't stick needles in your back, so where are we gonna do it? And um, so we started using Lingu and Dabai with classic master doing points, some SI points, and some bladder points in the leg and the foot, roll up a pant leg, and then you can do points down the bladder channel. Um, very useful for treating areas. And then as we did those over and over again, some of those systems uh, from Ton started falling away. They didn't seem to work as often. 
Um, so I sort of left, let them go and just ran with the ones that worked the best. And uh, that led me to the anatomical correspondency, which seems to work even better for me. I've been doing this a little while and um, I started with uh, Richard Tan and uh, I was given a Master Dong book um, by one of my teachers, uh, Dr. Roger Lohr, way back when, when I was a student in the 90s. And uh, it was uh, Mary Lee's book. It was the book that was out at the time. And um, I just kind of ran with those. Uh, and then Richard Tan came to town and I think I saw him in 95. And so he ran around and, um, and treated everyone in the room in short order and wow, the results were amazing. So I thought that's what I want to do and uh, have been ever since. Um, so again, the band theory, again, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I kept getting questions from students as I was teaching at uh, Oregon College of Oriental Medicine. And they would say, well, what's in between the channels? What, what if there's a pain in between spots? What, where do I go for that? I mean, if it's on the gallbladder channel, then we can, we have our image, we have our channel relationship, we go there. But what if it's between gallbladder and stomach? What if it's between gallbladder and liver? Then what? And uh, so I was like, well, the, the gallbladder channel is a little bigger, you know, it's wide. It, it, it takes up the whole side of the body with the little liver. So then I kind of went through and remapped it a bit. And uh, this went through, all these spots have been proven to me actually. And um, it took about 30 versions of this chart before I got it kind of where I want it. I may still adjust things over the years, but it's been pretty much set for the last oh, 10 years or so. Um, and then if we're treating organ problems, which is the focus of uh, today and this weekend, we're going to be talking about treating organs basically like you treat pain. So uh, whatever channel runs over the organ penetrates the organ. And also of course, internal branching um, we can follow those those branches as well a little bit. Um, of course, the channel of the organ goes to its organ. So even though a lung channel isn't running over the lung itself, it goes in and then perfuses the lung. So we can use lung points and we can use corresponding points, uh, channel relationship to lung, say opposite clock would be bladder. And then so we can use bladder points to treat lungs possible. So we'll talk about things like that. Here's some of those sample images. In previous seminars, we go through these very individually, do lots of examples rotate images, do a lot of treatments, do a lot of examples, uh, treat a bunch of people and, um, and show all that. So we're not gonna be doing as much of that this time, uh, though we will as we need to discuss a uh, condition, uh, whether we're talking about hearts or digestion or liver or whatever, uh, we'll talk about the, or the channels and the organs and the images that would rotate around to figure out where, where we line up the point to treat. Uh, and so this is you know, right off the chart there. <clears throat> Again, I'm sorry if I, I can't see your questions. All I've got is a big screen here. So um, I'll get to questions at the end, I suppose. Uh, so save those for me. And uh, you might have to retype them in towards the end, uh, you guys. Um, Again, the relationships, we've got uh, clock opposite. So that's across the clock, heart being uh, noon, gallbladder being midnight, and then everything two hours around. So um, the times aren't listed there because the time to me doesn't uh, in this version of this uh, system doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the, the fact that they're opposite is what matters to me. So the heart will treat gallbladder, gallbladder will treat heart channel wise. So gallbladder channel will be treated by heart channel, heart channel treated by gallbladder channel. Uh, the fact of the time of the day doesn't seem to make a difference so much. Uh, and then the other lines to the side, sort of the triangular looking ones, those are the name pairs. So Yang Ming, uh, hand treating Yang Ming foot, stomach, large intestine. Uh, you've got heart, uh, Xiao Yin with, Kidney, Xiao Yin, so heart and kidney treat each other. Um, the way I usually line these up is I find that um, when we have a, a pain or disease on the extremities, I like those name pairs. They line up very anatomically. Uh, if we're having pain on the torso or the head, I like the clock opposite. They seem to work a little bit better than anatomy. It's hard to figure out where the head is on the hand anatomically, but we can do it. So head is hand, and so we might find points on the hand, but we'll be using clock opposite. So if there's a gallbladder channel headache, opposite clock, heart, gallbladder, uh, we would do a heart point on the head as the head, neck, upper torso, right? So if you're not familiar with those, see previous seminars. Anatomical relationships, um, I really liked a lot. And as I started to figure out which bones related, um, once I got the bones mapped out, then the muscles that attached at those bones or went between the bones or along the bones started to show up and be active. Uh, oftentimes the muscles will have the same action. So like the external rotator of the leg, say piriformis, uh, and the external rotator of the arm, say teres minor, right? Or for spinatus, 
those treat each other very nicely. So if somebody's having piriformis syndrome or piriformis pain, you go up and check that opposite shoulder and you palpate around, find a tender spot in that teres minor major infraspinatus area, put a couple of needles in there and then uh, go back and check out that piriformis. It's amazing the changes that happen. Treat a lot of piriformis syndrome and sciatica that way. Other soft tissues relate as well, ligaments, tendons, um, tendons being, uh, you know, where the muscle attaches to bone, ligaments being bone to bone. So if you have a ligament problem, you want to treat a ligament issue. If you have a bone problem, you treat a bone. So we want to needle to the depth and the kind of tissue we're going for as well, again, in the area that relates. So uh, we can kind of line up these, these uh, different ways of looking at it and, um, and you get an increased effectiveness each time. Like if you're in the area opposite side uh, that relates uh, hip and shoulder and it's a muscle that you're treating and uh, you needle a muscle, great, those muscle muscle relates. If it's a, a muscle attachment that's having pain, like a piriformis, sometimes you get the pain at the trochanter where it inserts. Well, if you're in the belly of the muscle over here on, on teres, it may not work so great. It, it might get some of it because you're still in the same, in the correlating muscle, but you're not at the attachment. But if you go to the attachment where teres inserts, you have to kind of dig around back here on the back of the, of the humerus looking for that, that insertion, then it treats the insertion, right? The origin way back there on the, sac the scapula will treat the origin kind of at the sacrum. And so you can, you can specify exactly where on the muscle they're having the problem. Thank you, Cole, for a great webinar today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us.